like you got a God that's looking for you right now. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know what I love about God is that is that God is not afraid of our hangups. I, I know, I know, I know that we're oftentimes taught that God hides himself when we mess up and he, he, he goes and, and, and gets away from you because you're dirty. But, I, but, but according to what I read, even when I read the fall of Adam, it was interesting to me that when Adam fell, that God still came walking in the cool of the day. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking for Adam in the same place he always met him. And when Adam had hid himself from God, God said, Adam, where are you? Because we usually meet right here. Adam said, I was naked and I was ashamed and so I hid myself. God says, who told you? <laughs> You were naked. In other words, I don't know who this is for, but God told me to ask you a question. Who told you you was too messed up to get in his presence? Who told you your life was too messed up for him to come after you? Who told you? And so we have to change our concept of his presence. Yet you understand that there is... The omnipresence of God. That's the general presence of God. That's the presence of God that may not be known all the time, but it's always there. And then we move beyond the, the general or the omnipresence into the manifest presence. Woo! The manifest presence of God is when his presence becomes made known. My God, I need to let you know something in this place. God chasers, God wants to make himself known to you. He wants to make himself known in every aspect of your life. I don't know about you, but I'm glad he wants to make himself known in my money. He I'm going to say that again. Y'all missed that. He wants to make himself known in my money. He wants to make himself known in my marriage. He wants to make himself known with my children. He wants to make himself known on my job. He wants to make himself known in, the, in your house. He wants to make himself known. It is to know him in the power of his might. I want to know him. Is there anybody else in here that you say, I just want to know him? <laughs> I came to the conclusion I've done enough conferences I want to know him I've preached enough messages I want to know him I need a church in here that you're ready to know him at another level God just reveal yourself to me reveal yourself to me God now, now so I'm just teaching today God wanted to be known so much by humanity that he created a dwelling place that him and man could meet him and humanity could meet uh-huh in the desert with moses he created a tabernacle and he said this tabernacle is where i want us to meet and he said, I want you to create this according to the pattern of heaven. I want it to be an outer court. There's an outer court where the sacrifices and the washing takes place. And I want there to be an outer court. Let me just stop right there and let you know that God has moved us beyond outer court worship. <laughs> an outer court relationship. And he says there's an outer court and there's an inner court and there's the, the showbread and the, the candle and all this in the inner court. But then there was the, there was the most holy place. And the most holy place was the place where his presence resides. And in the most holy place, his glory would be made known in the most holy place. My God in here. Uh -huh. Because God wanted man to know his glory and to know his presence. But then, the, then, then, then after the tabernacle, God speaks to David and says, your son, your son, your son will build me a house. He will build me a house that I can dwell in. My God in here. He'll build me a house that I can come and I can be a part of and, and we can meet together. And so this is the concept of the temple. Somebody shout the temple. Come on, say it again. Say the temple. Here's what I need you to understand that the temple, the temple is the place that God and man come together. Ah, ah, good God Almighty. The temple, uh, especially under the old covenant, the temple was a place where heaven, watch this, heaven and earth joined together. <laughs> so in other words, if heaven was going to come through the earth, it would come through the temple. God, help me in here. If the earth was going to see the glory of God, it would come through the temple. This is why oftentimes, this is why oftentimes when they would look out and see the temple, the smoke would be coming, the fire would be coming out of the temple. And they would say the glory of the Lord is in the earth because the glory came out of the temple. Somebody 
somebody shout the glory comes out of the temple come on come on say that now to say the glory comes out of the temple yeah I hope y'all ready for this are you ready for this in here my God. So the temple was very vital. It was very vital. It was very vital to the believer of the first century church because they knew that if I go into the temple, I can, I can have this encounter with God that I want to have. So, so since I want to have an encounter with God, I meet him in the temple. And any place that they encountered God, they would make it a memorial said, this is the place that I met God. Jacob met God and called it El Bethel. The place, the house of God. The place where I've met God. The place where I've encountered God. Let me just stop right here. I just feel this right here. Somebody's about to encounter God in this place at a level you could not imagine in a level you could not even have thought of. God's ready for you to encounter him. Can you take 10 seconds and just give God a shout? My God, I feel like something's just about to happen in this place. I feel like something's just about to shift in this place. So the temple, <laughs> sit down. The temple is it, vital for the believer of the first century because they believed that as long as the temple is present, so is God's presence. Woo, my God. Uh, they believed that as long as the temple is intact, so is God's glory. And so they understood that in the temple, things happen in the temple. Are you with me? In the tabernacle, things happen in the tabernacle. God speaks to you in the temple. Are you with me in here? Oh God, God, miracles happen in the temple. How many know that we have a, we serve a miracle working God? Come on. Oh, do y'all believe that? We serve a God of miracles, signs, and wonders. And I believe that even right now, God is healing somebody right now. There's, there's something that you came in here with. God saying, I got you. I'm about to heal you of that. Oh, glory to God. So you got to understand. You got to understand. You got to understand. So the old covenant believer, can I teach for like two minutes? The old covenant believer um, only saw God in spurts and in moments. Uh -huh. the old covenant church the old covenant mindset that's the first century church the first century mindset they had the mindset of many people that are in the church today in other words many people in the church today believe the only moment they experience God is on Sunday morning uh, they believe that the only visitation they can have of God is at the next conference and so they wait until the next conference so that they can get to the next conference and get into another praise and worship service so that they can finally experience God Woo! good God Almighty it's an old covenant mindset that says that you can only experience him in certain moments in time not recognizing that God is not a God of time Woo! in other words God is not bound by a day God is not abound by a moment that God can show up any moment of your life. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be late in the midnight hour, crying in your bed, feeling like you're all alone, not knowing what to do, not knowing where to go, not knowing how to get there, and all of a sudden, you can be like Paul and Silas in a prison. All by yourself locked up and chained up I don't know who this is for right here you feel feeling like you can't go anywhere you feel feeling like you can't do nothing you're bound in a dark place you're bound in a nasty place you're bound in a place that feels like your life can't go forward and then all of a sudden you just start saying God is fighting for me God is on my side God is with me God is for somebody. Woo! And Bible says, and suddenly, around about midnight, woo! the chains of the prison, the chains begin to break. And the prison, I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's a breaking place in here that if you just open your mouth for the next 20 seconds, something is about to break. Woo! So the temple 
the temple was an important place because Jesus prayed this way. He said, pray this way, Matthew chapter 6. Um, um, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed holy is thy name. Thy basilia kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That word done literally means to make manifest. God help me. In other words, he says, I want your whole earth to look like my whole heaven. Oh God. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to challenge you for a minute. Just work with me. I'm going to challenge you. In other words, you don't have to die to wait till you experience heaven. Yo, God, can I, can I preach this thing in here? Oh, I, I don't know what they told you. I don't know what they told you. But you ain't got to rest in peace to have peace. As a matter of fact, since I'm out there, I'm going to stay right here since I'm out there. Listen, you don't rest in peace when you die anyway. You rested in peace when Jesus died. And the moment Jesus died, that's when your peace showed up. So the temple, <laughs> the, the temple was a very, a, very, a very important place for the old covenant believer. As a matter of fact, the temple was their world. It was their world. Everything centered around the, the temple. Oh uh, God. So that's why they, they were so discombobulated when Jesus comes to the temple and says, in three days... This thing is going down. And then he prophesies about the temple. And he says this temple is going to be turned over. And there's not going to be a stone left on this temple. And they said what in the world are you talking about Jesus? Our temple's going to be gone. But what they didn't recognize is that, that God had come to a point that he said I'm tired of visitations. <laughs> oh good God. God comes to a point and says, I want to be with you so much. I desire to be so close to you. I desire to be in your presence so much that this temporary temple, it ain't good enough for me. Oh, y'all talk to me in here. So Jesus says, listen, y'all, I've got to go. Because if I don't go, the comforter can't come. Woo! Good God, I'm gonna say this one more time. Uh, he said, I, I gotta leave. They said, Jesus, don't leave us. No, no, Why, where are you going? He said, No, 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 I gotta go. Somebody shall say, Somebody say, He had to go. Oh, I feel like preaching almost. <laughs> he said, I, I gotta go because if I don't go, the comforter can't come. In other words, he's saying, If I don't go, then we're always gonna have a temporary visitation with each other. <laughs> If I don't go, this thing is always going to be a one moment, one hit wonder. We'll show up and then we'll meet and then you'll leave and I'll leave. We'll always have that type of relationship. But I came here to let you know God is not a one stand, one night stand God. God is not a God that wants to come and make you feel good for a moment. God is a God that says, listen, I'm not here for, hab for a visitation. I'm here for a habitation. I came to let somebody know God wants to dwell of you watch mama stud watches oh my 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 yeah, yeah. so he said um, um this temporary temple has to go because i don't want visitation i want habitation i want to live with you and then he says wait 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 living with you ain't good enough <laughs> i want to live in you <laughs> Because the way we can have constant communion, communication and constant fellowship and we can constantly talk and we can constantly be together and we can constantly move together is not by me being in a temple, but by me being in a house. In other words, he's saying, listen, <laughs> you've been coming to visit me in the mountain. You've been coming to visit me down the street. But he said, not anymore. I am now making my dwelling place on the inside. Do you not know that your body is the temple? <laughs> oh, that he lives on the inside of you. He does not live in temples made with man's hands. He lives in, oh, are y'all in here today? He lives in a place, oh, good God Almighty, that's so close to you that anytime you need access, all you got to say is, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. 
I was I was looking for has anybody ever lost your keys before y'all ain't never lost your key y'all don't lose keys in San Antonio I lost my keys one time preacher and I was looking everywhere Man, l listen y'all I got crazy I started looking in the ice refrigerator I'm pulling the ice back the food I'm shaking stuff I'm looking in the cabinets moving stuff I was getting frustrated I was angry at by this point I turned the couch over I didn't kick the couch I ain't that strong but I turned the couch over moved the cushions I went through the bed I'm saying where are my keys I'm yelling I want my keys I'm, <laughs> I'm sweating doing all this stuff and I did this <laughs> and found out the thing that I had been searching for <laughs> was on me all along <laughs> I had been looking everywhere for what was already in me I don't know who I'm talking to in God chasers but I came to let you know that everything you've been looking for it's in the house ah! your joy is in the house your peace is in the house your hope is in the house your faith is in the house your love is in the house your healing is in the house your deliverance is in the house I need you to shout like you know it's in the glory of the Lord the text shall come and fill the temple the glory kabod in the Hebrew means the weightiness or fullness Hi, yeah, yeah. the fullness of a thing doxa in Greek means the very nature and character of a thing it means the full expression of a thing it means the height of achievement of a thing. It means the highest level of a thing. When something hits its glory years, it means it's in its stride. Woo! Good God Almighty. It means it's doing its thing now. When it's in its glory years, it can't be stopped. It's in a flow that can't be pulled back. It's in a momentum that can't be held back. There's a forward progress that can't be held back. When it's in the height of its expression, it's flying like an eagle. And you can't stop it. Even when the storm comes, it uses the storm to take it up higher. Because it's in a glory moment. <laughs> and the nature of a thing, the fullness of a thing. He said the glory will fill the temple. But when I recognize, Pastor Dante, that the temple is not in the desert. Oh, God, help me. The temple is not on the mountain. The temple is not even the building. But that the temple is... I am the temple. So when he says that the full stature of God is about to fulfill the temple... When he says that the nature and character of God is about to fulfill the temple. When he says the height of his achievement is about to fill the temple. I feel like preaching in here. When he says all that he is is about to fill the temple. He ain't talking about no building. He's talking about your temple. He's talking about your house. He said I'm about to fill you up with everything that I am. I'm about to fill you up with everything that I have. I need somebody to understand God is releasing the very fullness and character and nature of his supernatural power to dwell in you. Somebody shout, it's in the house. Shout it again, it's in the house. You've been looking for it every day. I came all the way from Oklahoma City to let you know it's right in your house. It's right in the house. You've been saying, God, win. And God says it's already in the house. You've been saying, God, I've been waiting a long time. And God is saying it's already in the house. You've been saying, God, I don't know if it's going to happen. And he said, no, it's already in the house. You've been looking up to heaven saying, bring it down. God says, no, I'm about to break it out. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
In other words, uh, you almost maybe preach right there. <laughs> In other words, the glory is not coming out of the sky. The glory is not coming out of the roof. The glory is not filling this building. What I need to tell somebody is that you're about to break forth. And the glory that's on the inside of you is about to fill this place. The glory is not coming down. The glory is coming out. I need about 20 people to stand on your feet like you're a glory container. Like you know you got something in the house. And I need you to open your mouth and release glory. Open your mouth and release glory. Woo! When I begin to shout, glory is coming out of the house. When I begin to praise them, glory is coming out of the house. I need you to shout. Come on, come on, don't stop. The nature of God is in this place. The healing of God is in this place. The freedom of God is in this place. Let the glory flow. 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 Some of y'all. Some of y'all came here today because you said, I can't just have an average day. Woo! The way my week been set up, the way my month has been set up, the way my year was set up, I can't have another average day today. I need to have an encounter with God. I need something to happen today. I don't know who that's for, but I believe there's a shout that's about to shift everything that you thought was going to take you out. God said, I need you just to release this glory. Unlock this glory. And when you unlock this glory, something is going to happen. I'm going to count to three. And I need just a few praises. When I count to three, to say, I'm going to take the lid off. I'm going to take the limits off. And I'm about to shout like I ain't never shouted before. I'm about to scream like I ain't never screamed before. Because I'm ready for the glory of the Lord. If you stay right there, something will break loose. If you stay right there, something will break loose. If you stay right there, something will happen. If you stay right there, something will shift. If you stay right there, something will change. If you stay right there, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands all over this place. Woo, ha, ya, ya. Ha, na, ma, Father God, we thank you. We honor you. God, that you have made us glory containers. And that everything that we've been searching for, we know is in the house. It's in the house. We recognize that you're closer than we could ever imagine. 
you're closer and God I speak to I speak to those that even felt lonely and felt alone father God and I just declare that right now father God that you just begin to reveal and manifest yourself in ways that will fill voids that will fill emptiness father God in the name of Jesus and you will cause right now father God that the infilling begin to stir up something begin to stir up father God even right now in the name of Jesus that there is an infilling father God and that the fire of the Holy Ghost even in this fire of this fire month the fire of the Holy Ghost will rest like never before father God in the name of Jesus I'm sitting down, but can I get about 20, 30 people just to cry out to the Lord like you know you're a glory container? Come on. I dare you to cry. Come on, right there. Cry out to the Lord. Oh, the glory. We need your glory. Come on, right there. We need your glory. We need your glory. We need your glory. We need your glory. Hey, shut up. We need your glory. I hear you God chasers can we give God a big hand clap of praise for his man of God this afternoon Pastor Tory Montgomery amen we would be remiss if we didn't give you an opportunity for those who heard this word and say hey 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 Pastor Kev Pastor Dante listen I want God to live inside of me how does that happen first you need Jesus to live inside of you amen so we're going to say a prayer. We're going to say this prayer. We want everybody to say it together. Amen. So you can say it sitting. You can say it standing. Whatever you want. It's okay. But everybody's going to say this prayer. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Thank you for loving me. I desire you to live in me. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my mistakes come into my life change my life come into my heart and change my heart father 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 you can live in me you can have the glory in me I am yours I am yours in Jesus name amen somebody shout to God with a sound of triumph in here real quick real quick if you said that prayer for the first time or for the thousandth time, do me a favor. Raise your hand right now. Just raise your hand right now. Raise your hand. Someone's going to come by and pray for you. Hey, God, pray. God, try to give God a praise right now. We got some hands lifted up. Some hands are lifted up. Some hands are lifted up. Some, hey, get that man right there. Get that man right there. Some hands are lifted up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, hear me. Woo, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. People are coming to Jesus. Lives are being changed and set free. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Glory. Now, there's one more thing. The one more thing that we're led to do. Okay, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Okay. In the Bible, it says, if you sow a seed into a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward the prophet the man of God came and he poured out today he poured out today he poured out today there's a story about a man named Elijah after he goes through his depression he he God tells him go to a place called Zarephath and there's a woman there who has who has something for him and when he goes there uh he says i need you to make me something to drink and something to eat and she says uh, all i have is a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil in my house somebody say it's in the house say it again say it's in the house and she he, he, she says i'm gonna make this bread for my son and i and i'm gonna die he says okay do me a favor feed me make me some bread and make some bread for you and your your son but i have a word for you he says when you go to this house and you make me your bread God said that if you give to me then he says I'll make sure that your flour will never go out your oil will never go out so when you give unto the prophet God said I'll make sure you'll never run out you'll not I thought a few people will be amen on that one God said you will never lack again you'll never have to worry about your paycheck again you won't have to worry about that bonus again because if you pour out and you sow to a prophet he said I'll make sure that you have everything you need everything you desire not because of the man but because you are obedient to God and I'm looking for a few people to be obedient to God and say hey if this man blessed you today sow to this man sow to what he did sow a seed into his life this man traveled from Oklahoma to Texas left his church he didn't need to come preach here he has a church to preach in but God called him here to sow a seed into our life and were you blessed today I said were you blessed today I said were you blessed today if you are blessed, be a blessing. So you can, you have, we have our, our ministry leaders here. You can, uh, if you want an envelope, they'll give you an envelope. If you want to sow a seed, uh, five, ten, twenty dollars, uh, whatever you, do, whatever God puts in your heart. We also have the, uh, the connect desk out there. You can sow a seed out there as well. You can also, uh, uh text seed, S E E E D to eight, four, three, two, one, any amount to follow. Okay. Text seed, S E E D to 84321 so any amount 5 10 15 20 50 dollars whatever the lord puts on your heart i'm not going to give you an amount whatever god puts on your heart we want you to sow into that amen amen can you guys do me a favor again and just give god a praise for pastor tory montgomery let's pray over this offering Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your servant. We thank you for your prophet, your preacher, God, for coming and, and, and inspiring us, God, setting us ablaze, God, because it's in the house. It's in the house, God. It's in us, God. It's in us, and we're so glad that, Lord, you love us so much to send a great man, a great preacher, God, to help us today, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Now, allow these people, God, to sow in to, uh, to your gifts, to your man, God, uh, uh, in order to receive the prophet reward that you you promise in your word lord we bless you god and now bless them as they give in jesus name amen amen god bless you god chases god bless you amen i'm gonna ask my beautiful wife to come up have you guys this is just day one you guys goodness gracious are y'all ready for the rest of firepower that was weak are you ready for the rest of firepower Okay, this side, you're awesome, but something wrong with this middle section. Are you ready for the rest of firepower? Yeah. Let me try this section. Are y'all ready? Hi, sweetie. Hi, Keisha. Are you ready for the rest of firepower? 
I'm gonna work. I'm gonna pray for y'all. I'm gonna pray for y'all. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna lay hands at the church. Amen. Hey, after church, you guys, we will have some ministry leaders, some ministers from Charisma standing here ready for prayer. If you would like to get prayed over and for, uh, we love this part of our experience where we get to just love on you and pour into you what God has uh, for you. Uh, uh, also, uh, if you would like this to be your church home, you want to be a part of this beautiful, growing body of believers. I want you to do me a favor. Just take a step of faith, stand up, and walk to the front. Walk to the front. Shake my hand. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. All right. I know who you are, but tell the people who you are, sir. I say hi to Marcus. I say hi to Marcus. Do me a favor, Marcus. This young lady right here, follow her out. We're going to talk to you in just a little bit. All right. Tell us your name, ma'am. Bernadette. If I say hi, Bernadette. God bless you, man. We're so excited to have you here. Follow this young lady here. Right here. Man, God chase. Look at that. Is there anybody else? 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 All right, do me a favor, God Jesus. My wife is gonna pray. Can y'all please stand up? Oh, y'all gonna join too? Y'all come on down. Don't don't hold it back. Come on. Is there anybody else? 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 Give us a hug, y'all. This is this is crazy. All right, tell us your name. If I say hi, Rose. What's your name, young man? Hey, Jonathan, everybody say hi to Jonathan. Oh, so Rose also dedicated her life to the Lord this afternoon as well, y'all. Can y'all give it up? And her son, too. Woo! God. Amen. Bless you guys. We love you guys. We're going to talk to you guys some more. Follow this young lady right here out, and we're going to be talking to you guys outside. Eh? God chase you. Y'all give God a praise. let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for your majesty, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence, Father. I thank you, Lord, for letting us know that we are carriers of your glory, Father. I ask you right now that every single person that is under my voice walk away feeling empowered, free, Father God, ready to receive, Father God, what you have next for them, Father. I ask you right now, Father God, that you just open their eyes, Lord, open their ears, Lord, allow them to rejoice in your presence, Father. I thank you, Father God, for today, the beginning, a new month, Father God, Lord. I ask you, Father God, Lord, for just moving us forward, Father. We give you all the honor and all the glory, Father, and we thank you and expectantly believe, Father God, that what is in front of us is the best, Father God. The best is yet to come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hug somebody on your way out. We love you, God. Jesus, be back next Sunday, 12-12, for round two of our Fire Power Revival. God bless you guys. We love you. desire prayer or anyone that's